you. We are back from break. Uh, and you know me, Daisy, and this time I'm joined by John Fent. Uh, John, welcome. Yes. We've, welcome Thank back you. from break. Um, we've been playing Where the Water Tastes Like Wine. What do you think of the game? It's, uh, it, it, it's kind of confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, well, I mean the mechanics of it are pretty straightforward, <laughs> but it's just like this it's a big um, giant story but, web yeah yeah, yeah. And, and 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 i'm conf I, I don't know I, just, I guess i like to move faster than, <laughs> than the skeleton moves okay i <laughs> no, i agree skeleton I'm too slow it. skeleton too slow i agree <laughs> um so let's jump into the interview but right before we do that we have one more thing to do as we typically do and that's for Dom to lead us through. Yes, whether it's an hour on the internet, whether it's a half hour in a ballroom at the Gaylord National Harbor, uh, that we've got uh, other people writing these uh, questions for John, and that's our illustrious, uh, a, 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 another adjective. Sleepy. So this has been a long day. Unstumpable. Sleepy? And sli sleepy and eepy. Yes. Who uh, write these questions. Uh, a thank you, thank you to the chair of of sleuthing studies, uh, the Caitlin Kinney, do yes. a doctor of phil philosophical angles. And, yeah, uh, that's a real and, degree. Uh, it's a real degree. And uh, thank you so much for <laughs> helping us write the questions and helping us interview uh, John on his uh, second but first full length interview on the show. Thank it's you. It's like sleuths. a re-debut. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Hell yeah! This this is kind of like uh, when somebody has like a like a hit single before an album. Yeah, and it's like a mixtape, so it's not yeah. really like released officially. You're you're Pretty in much, a chance yeah. you're in a chance the rapper type scenario right now. <laughs> yeah. So early, so you not, not my kids it. have definitely left if they're still. On. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Amazing, John. If you like the question, chat, if you like the question, don't thank me and Daisy. Thank the sleuths. Thank okay. the sleuths. Legally. Yes. <laughs> Thank the sleuths. John, are you ready for question number one? Yes, please. Okay. Presently, you are the head of research and programs at the American Folklife Center at the Library of Congress. It's a mouthful. What is Accurate. What is one research project and one public program going on right now that you're really excited to be part of? Okay, let's see. Um, public. I'm going to start with public programs. Um, okay. And again, since it's the beginning of the fiscal year, we're in kind of a nice little valley right now, right? Because uh, <laughs> it's like we just woke up and it's spraying and we're <laughs> coming around looking for our food. Um, uh, public programs this year, we're going to do a big series of public programs, um, kind of amplifying, honoring, celebrating the Community Collections Grant Um initiative that we've been run, running for the past like three years four years so that's going to be fun there's going to be concerts there's going to be a symposium where we bring a bunch of the awardees at two different dates um to the library to talk about what they did and share so that's that's going to be fun i'm looking forward to that it'll be um a lot of logistics and a lot of sort of teamwork there but um it's going to be really awesome so that's a good one um research project i mean we're doing um we're doing a bunch of good work to kind of like lead up to an exhibit mm. celebrating the 50th anniversary of the American Folklife Center in 2026. So that's involving some deep collections research on behalf of staff. We have a like internal staff team um, and kind of crafting five different sort of thematic aspects of the exhibit. So there's, it's like a big research puzzle. That's awesome. So I, I would say those are the two top things public program wise and research project wise that are right in front of me that are exciting so when those are developing what role do you take in that as sort of the the head of that sort of realm of research the head of research and programs what do you kind of yeah, do so to I, I, I get those? to i have to make sure the money is where it needs to be for public programs that's important so that's kind of, the kind of bureaucratic side of things, um, but also help structure the work so that it meets both, um, I guess kind of conceptualize it. So it's meeting like the, the unit's mission, so the AFC and then the, the wider library and the director we're part of within the library that we're kind of hitting all of those um, 
objectives and goals. So that's kind of partly my role is to help make sure that the, the support the staff work so that we hit those goals. So not, hopefully not contain anything, but, but yeah, I guess support is the best word. And, yeah, and help schedule yeah. things, make sure that people know like what, you know, piece of paper needs to move in which direction to get this thing approved, that kind of thing. Um, but but luckily, I do get to do some of the fun stuff, too, which is kind of sit in on some of the meetings and review documents and make sure that the ideas that are flowing are are exciting and are kind of capturing both staff subject matter expertise and their kind of deep skills in curating and presenting and interpreting cultural heritage. That's awesome. <laughs> I was, I, I'm glad like that you could share some of that with us because I was kind of like, this is a big role for lots of different research projects and programs. So yeah. it's helpful to kind of understand like what a folklorist in your position kind of does to help get like a projects on that scale kind of come to the public, I guess, go from like idea stage to public stage. And really I learned cool. none of that in grad school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, uh, I'm sure all of your guests have said that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I think not, not enough. Not enough. Yeah, not enough. Um, or at least that there's not enough of a conversation happening about that. No, that's important though. Like learning those kinds of skills, like you know, getting a folklore degree and then places where you end up as a folklorist, there's often like a discrepancy in the kinds of work that you do and the knowledge that you have, yeah. and so being aware of that and being able to bring them together into something um, is a skill, honestly. Yeah. And, yeah. and I don't, I don't know if I said this on our, our take one of this at the, <laughs> at, at the MAGFest, but um, like, you know, I, I, so I do have an advanced degree in folklore, right. Um, but uh, that was not a requirement for my job that mm -hmm. I'm currently in. Like you, like you do not have to, there was no education requirement. Interesting. Um, yeah. It certainly helped. I mean, I think it made me a competitive candidate, but it was like the skills and the abilities to kind of do some of that, like, you know, boring bureaucratic stuff, but also think critically, see patterns, like, you know, all the sort of stuff that we do learn in folk or grad school like that. Yeah. Those are portable skills. That makes sense. Um, I have another question for you, if you're ready for it. I'm ready. What kind of vision do you have for folklore research in the United States in relation to creating accessible collections and programs available at your institution? What kind of vision do I have, huh? I mean, I think the, the vision I have is to, to make things accessible in a way that people see themselves in the collections. Ooh, that's good, yeah. Yeah. Right. So they so they can be like, you know, I mean that you know, it's the like, oh, that's this is about food. I like food. Oh, this is kind of interesting. You know, that's kind of the 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 base level of it. Um that it that it doesn't get presented or interpreted as so esoteric that people aren't going to be interested, but it's kind of embracing that notion of cultural diversity and um discoverability of of, of the cool factor, right? The kind of interesting fun stuff, but also the relatable factor, like, oh, this is a a song about you know whatever a, a ship sinking in the great lakes oh i can relate to that even though i live in a desert community <laughs> like i mean like you know how, how you, so again it's like creating the accessibility not just on the content but on the framing around it too like people use yeah. stories and songs to talk about experience but also to understand you know where they are now place so cool. um i think that's kind of the vision and i think again folklore studies um enables us who go through it to kind of think holistically in a way to not get caught up, you know, with like kinship structures, you know, I'm always going to diss anthropologists. <laughs> um, but, but like to not get caught up on the structural stuff, but on the, on the um, aesthetically engaging and kind of affective um, paths yeah. that creative culture sort of allows us to go down. Um, what are some ways that the community and by the community, I mean, like the community of the United States and the many, many different cultures and people who are part of that conglomeration, um, what are some of the ways that that community contributes directly to the American Folk Life Center that's not just gifting objects and personal collections? Oh, that's a good one. 
Um, I think it's calling in, you know, to our reference desk or sending queries into Ask a Librarian. I mean, we get so many of these, like, I grew up with a song that has in the list, like, seven words in it. Do you have that in your collection? <laughs> You're like, <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> well, you know, 90% of the time, the yeah. answer is yes, and we find it. But it's like, it that allows us to dig deeper into what we have and make connections between things. Like, oh, this person called the song this thing, but here, over in the southern part of the country, it's this thing. And we just got these two different yeah. random queries. And so it's it's the kinds of questions people bring to us, I think, is 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 one of the huge contributions. The um the the enthusiasm that that I also get to see when like I'm in the reading room and people come in and because AFC um is so place based right all of our collections yeah. come from somewhere and from someone someone will walk in and they'll be like oh I'm from Connecticut and be like where what which county oh wait we have something from there you know like and it's not always reachable like it's not always online or something but we can say oh we have so it's like that joy that people are like, oh, huh. my my home, whether it's where I grew up or whether I currently live, is kind of represented in the Library of Congress somehow. That's so. There's there's always like a little bit of spark that that I think people bring. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I think those are those are the two the two big things. I mean, it's also just the uh, the um the inspiration that people bring to like how they use the collections. Right, we get a lot of musicians and other artists sort of digging into stuff that's from their home community or from a tradition that they're they're um, either coming out of or getting more familiar with, more intimate with, and it's just that inspiration too is something that I think people people bring into they give to us without having to give something to us. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, uh, go ahead, Dom. John. Uh, DNA Soros in chat says Judith Gray knows the answer. She knows everything. Uh, Judith Gray does know everything. I can confirm that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> she, she's also an amazing birder, and she can identify birds by, you know, three seconds of their call. And um, That's awesome. Yeah. That's a very cool skill. I've tried to pick up on some of that, but there are, you have to spend so long listening and, like, really, like, getting it in your brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you have to have, like, a different yeah. sort of sense of yeah. space. Yeah, totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. totally. Space this time. <laughs> Yeah, oh. Judith is amazing. All the staff at AFC are phenomenal, I will say. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm I'm glad that you feel that way and feel cool publicly talking about how great they are. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, you mentioned in the sort of interview intake form that we we give to guests that there's a kind of crowdsourcing transcription effort being pushed by yeah. the AFC. Could you tell us a little bit more about that in relation to like community participation with the collections? Yeah. yeah. So um so crowd.lock.gov or crowd.loc.gov is the, the platform for by the people, which is a um a crowdsourcing transcription initiative launched by the library shortly after I arrived there, so like 2018, 2019. And and the idea is to get online collections that are scanned manuscripts but not OCRable. And, and mm. I'm sure that's term somewhere for whatever reason either they're handwritten or they were scanned before ocr was really good and we don't want to go back and rescan them because why do that um so it's getting people to transcribe things that that can't be transcribed um by machines um it's it's been an incredibly popular uh platform the smithsonian has a similar kind of public you know crowdsource transcription <laughs> thing going on and what it does is it makes the collections more accessible because once those things are transcribed then they are machine searchable so you can search a manuscript collection of 20,000 pages by typing in a few words into the search bar rather than having to like go to someone like Judith or like another reference librarian like is there a letter you yeah. know from Muddy Waters to Alan Lomax in your collection and be like yes there is because we know that letter but also if you just search Muddy Waters in the Lomax manuscript so collection much. since it's all been transcribed through this platform it'll pull up all the hits Mm. So so it makes them way more discoverable and accessible. Mm. Um, it also helps with ADA compatibility. I mean, so people, you know, yeah. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things going on with it. But what's really cool is, is so AFC has participated in this um, since the library launched it. And so what we do is we submit collections to this team and they say, oh, yeah, that's good. There's a lot of manuscripts there. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. Um, do you want to help us craft a campaign? And so we we that's where we get involved. And that's like public engagement, outreach. Gotcha. So the most recent one that just launched um 
a couple of weeks ago is the Chicago Ethnic Arts Project manuscript collection. So in 1977, right after the Folklore Five Center started, we ran a project with Illinois Arts Council in Chicago where we did documentation with um, AFC staff and then a bunch of contracted folklorists and documentary photographers and other folks who went around 2022, 20, 23 different neighborhoods in Chicago, which was very sort of... Um, the neighborhoods were, were ethnically based, right? People lived in a certain neighborhood. There was a Lithuanian community. It was, you know, so there was the, all over the place. And all that documentation, you know, it's like 900 hours of audio. There's tens of thousands of photographs and tens of thousands of, well, there's probably like 10,000 manuscript pages of field notes, photo logs, um, transcripts from interviews. All of it's online, but none of the, documents are machine searchable right now right mm. they're just you have to right. kind of know it's page 13 of this transcript um so we, we we launched a campaign um recently to get those all transcribed it's going really quickly too it's incredible it's going incredibly fast um which means that there's interest in it and we did we did a lot of outreach in chicago so several years back um Michelle Stefano, not a staff member at AFC and myself, went to Chicago through and through all these connections she had been making. We worked with the Chicago Cultural Alliance and Chicago Public Libraries, and we talked to librarians. We're like, hey, we have this collection. And they're like, what? You do? And we're showing them photos. They're like, oh, that's the bar where my parents used to drink. Like, you know, everyone like recognizes themselves that's in so the collection. Cool. Right? So that's a hook. And then um, so we went back to them and we said, hey, can you publicize this? And so I'm guessing we're getting a lot of people in Chicago transcribing this stuff. Um, That's which really is cool. cool. And then we've seen that with other collections we've put out where people from the places where it happened transcribe. And then there's also just people who love to do this kind of work. I mean, reading most of this stuff is probably typescript. So it was pre-computer, but it wasn't mm -hmm. handwritten. Right. So like, you know, reading these weird typescript field notes and, 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 and then just transcribing them in the next window over and this kind of cool interface that the library built. Um, yeah, so that's kind of one of the fun public engagement and enhancing the value of the collections kind of Venn diagram things that, that I think the library has been getting pretty good at in the past couple of years. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I feel like a lot of people think, oh, it's the library, it's the Folklife Center. I go to look at books or collection and that is what i do but it so, can be so much more than that in lots of yeah. different ways so i was just curious so thank you for sharing with that with us all right ready for another one keep them coming <laughs> how does an education in folklore help you make things possible in a large bureaucracy which is a quote in how you define sort of your sense of work and your your purpose right now yeah so um it's 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 largely an ethnographic project in my mind, and I think the first year or so of working at the library, um, I mean, I was you know I was in a university before, and those are giant bureaucracies, and you just sort of learn to recognize patterns, learn to identify where the sources of decisions are, and like you know who you need to talk to to get something done. Um, so it's a, it's a lot of field work type stuff. Um, so I think it's that those 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 folklore skills that we learn in fieldwork classes and through reading ethnographic works, doing interviews, talking to people that um, that have allowed me to to be able to um, both navigate the bureaucracy and sort of understand it in ways that then allow staff who have deep subject matter expertise or mad skills and other things to kind of really shine and do that work. So yeah, it's, it's, it's just being able, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a superpower or anything. It's just like being able to, <laughs> to, to, to withstand bureaucracy because it's like, Oh, not, not, not like I find it fascinating, but it's like, Oh, this is interesting. This person is telling me, no, this person's telling me, yes, there's gotta be someone in between them that knows the answer. Yeah. And I'm going to find them. <laughs> yeah, you're like kind of tracing the the map of the way the system is working in a way yeah, that, yeah. that you're doing by being a good listener and by trying to, you know, engage with people on their level and their languages that they speak, which might not translate across departments or whatever, you know? Yes. Yeah. That's it, cool. it is that, that set of skills, again, that I, I, I connect back to field work. Yeah. And just being able to navigate that. 
Daisy, you saying tracing the map sounds a little too uh, like kinship graph. <laughs> Uh, and John was just talking about uh, good point. <laughs> oh, Shit, not doing <laughs> Shit. This is like psychogeography. This yeah, is it's like, like, you're yeah, like yeah, this, this is the Finnish method. <laughs> I'm figuring out what symbols they're interested in to be able to expand upon <laughs> their the way that I, I can best the communicate the message. Meaning making yeah. in the bureaucratic land. <laughs> oh my god, not maps of meaning. Although, although I, I am really good at reading org charts now too, which is more Ooh. like the kinship maps, right? Of like yeah, org That's charts true. are like. A, those are yeah. pretty fascinating. There is. Um, I can tell you a lot. <laughs> there was a per. There's a person, a graduate student in my department, did that of graduate student activist organizations to, because you know those are always churning out different people because of the the yeah. turnover rate of a, of a university. I was like mind blown based on some of the histories. It was Either. very interesting. Yeah. Huh. yeah. The the other day, my boss said, "Who's the undersecretary for Veterans Affairs?" I don't want to look at the org chart. <laughs> Some people are into it, some people are not. I understand. <laughs> that, that, present, that presents the folklorist to memory. Like, I could look yeah. at the org chart, I could talk to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> find, find, find me by the center. water cooler for the lore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in, this, in this same realm, do you have, or what advice do you have um, for new professionals who are beginning to work in these kinds of types of structures as folklorists? Like, do you have any advice for like new professional folklorists starting to work in in these areas that are not necessarily? Ooh, okay. <laughs> um, preach to the choir on that one. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, interesting. You too. <laughs> I think. Um, I mean, it's like you know, you kind of be uh, manage your expectations because because the systems are intended to slow things down. <laughs> Care. <laughs> especially government-based systems yeah. um and 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 be patient and curious i think like again it's that field work thing like yeah. lean into that rather than you know also recognizing that when you're you know if you've recently graduated and you've written a master's thesis or a dissertation um you know that can't be the 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 end statement on everything you're never going to know it all but you have to know enough to get to the next step which could be the end of the fiscal year, the end of this project, um, getting through a contracting process. Like, you know, just kind of look, making sure you're knowing enough to do that and then feel comfortable that also, I guess, feeling comfortable that um, being a folklorist doesn't mean you aren't good at that other stuff. It just means you can learn how to do that other stuff. I mean, yeah. <laughs> really, That's anyone's a good, who's, anyone who's good at bureaucratic stuff is probably just. You're like oh my gosh what is wrong with me well one thing you're making me think about that i'm definitely going to take away is like another little i don't know echo of things to keep in mind as at least in my work in my future as a folklorist is you saying always choose the question that kind of like when we were playing yeah. where the water tastes like wine like if you have an option to make That's a statement a or a question mm -hmm. I'm, I'm making the connection of your answer right now and saying like be curious like yes be be you know patient sure that that's annoying and difficult sometimes but the real thing is to be curious like why is it slow what is happening who is talking where is this decision coming from like those types of i questions. often find yeah. myself saying instead of like god this is stupid and a terrible way to do things it's like why do we do things like this <laughs> yeah yeah why do we do things like true yeah because then you can be curious and then can lead to more answers process, even though yeah. in my the back of my head i'm like jesus why are you doing this <laughs> yeah um, so it's how you yeah. ask the question but uh, yeah i think i think ask the question um and and try to gain an understanding of of what the the networks are the networks you know again that's what i kind of want to move by pattern recognition like who yeah. who is constantly coming in and offering a solution versus who is constantly coming in and offering a roadblock mm, interesting yeah and they're yeah. like, okay, that I see that pattern. I know I have to talk to both those people to get approvals, but which order do I go in now? Yeah, but I I hear you. That makes sense. Uh, DNA Saurus in the chat says bureaucracy is like a riddle. I love that folkloric way of putting that, but also in the kind of questioning thing. Like it's a riddle. You might I don't know. The questions come up in riddles. They're not always like board games or yeah, whatever. They're not going like, to have a, always, a yes no answer. Yeah, they don't, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. They're yeah. not going to have an apparent answer. Yeah. <laughs> John, I have a couple of funzy questions for you, but I think Dom should ask the first one. Oh, yeah, I'd love to. Okay. What voice are you going to use, Dom? 
Um, I uh, probably like uh, lives in Florida, grew up in Northern Ohio, but born in New Jersey. So okay. like, kind of like Great Lakes twang through it, but I'll never say pop. It's soda. Okay, it's soda. <laughs> and down. All right, shoot. Okay, uh, John, what's the one experience you tell everyone about the time you went to Magfest? Oh, it was probably walking into that like giant airplane hangar with all those CRT televisions. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yes. Truly a magical place. And I was just like, where do they keep all those televisions? <laughs> And how do they have so many of them? They're, yeah, uh, no, where, yeah. Import. Where are they coming from? Yeah. <laughs> I think it was going into when you guys took me into that room that where it was just gaming going on on mm-hmm. like the old school, yeah. you know, consoles. And then and then also, I mean, this that whole. I think I think it was a U shaped space where we went around the and archive we went into, the, into the indie gaming place, right? Where the oh yeah, yep. that was, like so it was just that whole trajectory through there, right? Yeah, yeah, it, that was yeah, cool. I, I've told many people that story, and they just can't imagine it. And I have a couple of pictures on oh. my phone. It just doesn't do it justice, though. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. consoles to vendors to indie games yeah. to yeah. arcade I just, games, all in that airport. It was truly really wonderful. I, and the noise or the sound. I was just, I was just gonna say, like, I yeah. can't. I've ne- what a unique experience to hear hundreds of people playing a game at once. I know that that's what it's like at you know various you know. I guess esports conventions, depending on the size and scale and whatever, however the layout is, but like that is to have so many different types of games making so many different types of sounds and say, and the hum the, the hum of like brr, brr, brr. yeah I was gonna say like the hum <laughs> of like hundreds of people like <laughs> and the slapping of the buttons down like you can yeah <laughs> so good yeah yeah you get to hear button smashing and for real yeah. Yeah, no, that, well. that's I, yeah. I've told multiple yeah. people that story. It's cool, cool. Oh, oh. this is and per- I've told a few people about the. This is like the second level one, Tom, and, and I think this was just you and I. I don't remember where Daisy went, but when yeah. it was like the, in the the photo shoot grotto, you oh. know, yep. And in so, like the D and D movie had just come out. It was about oh, yeah. the, you had to explain all this to me, Tom. Oh, Baldur's Gate had just come out. That's yes. what it was. Baldur's yes. Gate. And all yes. these people were like. There was like 18 million people dressed as the same character, and they were all <laughs> taking photos at the same time, and it was kind of overwhelming and beautiful. Yeah, yeah. it was a. Uh, it was what, what's like the plural for a group of shadow hearts? It was a. Uh, it, it was an unpleasantness of shadow hearts. <laughs> I was gonna a say, I, uh, yeah, a yeah. Qu- a quiver. yeah, she's yeah. a ma- magician, so yeah, she's a cleric. Uh, she's a cleric, so yeah, something like that. Was like, yeah, it's very yeah, no. Hi, Lomi. I think, uh, I, I think, um, God, oh, what was I going to say? Your, uh, MAGFest memory, maybe? Oh, the one no, you no, this say? is, this, for people playing at home, this is the second uh, interview in two weeks where someone has postulated, whether on purpose or on accident, that part of gamer folklore is preserving CRT tube TVs. Oh! I think, I think it's an important part of it. I yeah. Think, I think it really is. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's so interesting how like the I mean, you get to really see materially, physically in real time the way technology has changed in a sense that you can engage with it across decades. That's another weird experience. Like there's it's so different to like experience the pace of technology changing in time with the changing technology, but to have it all right there, your decades are squished up. You can just like engage with it you just get to see how much more how much change has really happened which is like so yeah. fascinating i think yeah, that, that, yeah, that was the, truly lovely yeah when you're in the tube tv area and like the farther you walk like down into the tube tvs the more joysticks appear on controllers that's very fascinating yeah 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 because yeah again it's that it's that archaeology that yeah. you're just saying that yeah. you're like walking past these layers of stuff yeah it's cool John, I have another question for you, and it's kind of related, but also kind of not. Um, and this one's also important for the audience to listen in. So if any of you have walked away for a second, come back, because you may need to help with this one. John, you're a man with a dream, and that dream is video game based. <laughs> Pitch to our audience your dream brain video game. <laughs> okay, so my dream game, and I've had this dream since, like, college, I think, um, is it's called Raptor. <laughs> 
Love it. And and it's like a, a, a point of view, like a POV game where you're a raptor. And you can choose different raptors. Like you could be an osprey, you could be a golden eagle, you could be a kestrel, you know, all different. Very cool. And and, and so you have the, the both the constraints and the abilities of those raptors. And then you have to fly around finding food. I love it. And, and I, I mean, I never got like to the point of like, what? You, maybe there's no winning. You just, you just don't die. I guess I don't know. <laughs> that's there could, what makes it an immersive sim. Is that there's yeah. no, is that an immersive? There's is that what it is? Yeah. Every day, yeah. Yeah, you can come back every day, and you just you feed your kestrel yeah, you feed raptor, your, 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 your hatchlings, and maybe you, and you, I guess maybe you build a nest if it's a really advanced game. Like yeah. you learn how to do that, maybe. or you chase other birds out of their nest, like like what some raptors do. They're bullies. <laughs> yeah it's like you make it through the storm or yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah um so I've, I've always thought that would be like a really fun like again because i don't play a lot yeah. of video games as you guys know and i don't know how many people on the watching this do, but i don't play a lot of games right i'm 50 50 honestly yeah some people are here for the games some people are here for the folklore <laughs> yeah i always thought that would be like a really good one okay chat you heard it here and we're crowdsourcing any friends any connections that can help develop this game um if you know I'm anybody the script and the narrative and the strange you know sort of voices that dom can help do and daisy mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah we can yeah we can do it i want to play the raven and i'm just going to talk about lamar <laughs> i was gonna say ooh, I, I could i can totally see I mean, there's so many pre-existing mapped ways you can think about the the affordances and constraints of being different types of raptors. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, there could there could really be a whole plot to this for, for I, I sure. Think, I think that would yeah. be a great video game. John, it's a little off topic, but do you know the game Stray? No. It's this, but you're a stray cat. And I know the point. It sounds like the point of your game is a Z axis. Uh, but yeah. Stray has Stray has kind of is, is approaching your dream. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it could be that there could be a crossover game where it's like Stray versus Raptor, where the Raptor's oh trying to God. actually get the Stray. Oh my God. Like it's a so DLC. Sonic, like uh, Sonic versus Mario at the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So a whole universe can can emerge here. <laughs> um, I really like this. I think this is a stray DLC <clears throat> where the Raptors meet cats, even. There's more that could happen here. There's a lot going on. Um all right, we're uh, DNA Saurus says Mason has some video games design major. I could think I could get some of those kids to take folklore classes and put them to work. Let's figure this yeah. out. <laughs> uh, let's let's, let's go create this super team. I like Natalie. Do you this know Natalie cool. Underberg good? Yeah, I was yeah. in grad school with her. Oh yeah, yeah sure, because she's in because she's in the like the game design department. Yeah, she's like in the media world. Yeah, she's in the media Florida, game yeah. design uh -huh. as a folklorist. <laughs> yeah, na all right. One, Natalie, how have you not been on Folklore's yet? Yeah, uh, wait, hold on. Two, <laughs> Jot that uh, down. <laughs> Natalie, get, get, see if you can get Raptor greenlit. <laughs> yeah, can you greenlight Raptor? This that would, would be the great, like, the great culmination <laughs> of all of our PhDs. Right? It, would be, oh my God. It, would be, it would be awesome. <laughs> all right, I have a final funsy question for you before we play a silly little game together. Are you ready for it? Okay. Yep. Outside of Birthday Donuts... What is a family tradition or joke that brings you all together no matter where you are across the globe? And define family as expansively as that means to you. Oh, yeah. Our, our, our four family, that's me and Lisa and the kids, we're like, we have a lot of bits and jokes. <laughs> They're <laughs> constant. Yes, good. They're hard to keep up with. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. What is, okay, let me see. What is one that will bring us all together? Kind of like a fart joke or something like that. <laughs> Dom, play the sounds! Play the sounds, Dom! Uh, 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 okay, the Foley artist is now fired. <laughs> there we go. Go for it. Do it again. <laughs> I got a better one. Got that a better was, one. That's like our only... <laughs> okay, go for it. It's not a fart. Okay. okay. <laughs> anyway, those like are those one. are our foley sounds that are totally not uh useful in literally any other context but this one when you mentioned fart jokes. So that's real honestly like to, kind of inspired. Bring it around. Kind of inspired. I, bring it around. I yeah. love wait, that. Wait, I got short with reverb. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
I also have a very I also have a very appropriate one for Magfest. Are you ready? Oh my yes. yes. That's the Colossus oh, you were doing all over Magfest. Oh, right? oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yeah, wow. I think it would be something based like that. <laughs> um, f- future folklore of America says can confirm. I feel brought together as a family currently. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Hell yeah! I love that. I bet you that's Monica, but uh, we'll, we'll, I don't know. <laughs> love that. Love that. All right, uh, John. I'm gonna set up uh, a game here for us. Um, Dom, do you want to explain what the heck uh, I'm about to do? I I have been dying to. Daisy, because let me tell you, John, we had you as our as our live guest at Magfest, and we had to like condense uh, our usual four hour show into one. And one thing that was sadly left on the cutting room floor was the tier list. So, question okay. for you, John: Have you ever built a tier list? I don't believe so. Ah, well, hit watch stream if you haven't yet. Tier lists come from fighting games as a way to rank character choice. But on Twitch and other parts of the internet, people like to use tier lists to rank everyday stuff and we as folklorists love everyday stuff we love it and we as gamers love ranking so <laughs> okay. um daisy is going to walk you through this tier list we have selected for you which is every type of donut and so okay. we're going to rank <laughs> the donuts and this being a, a japanese style tier list it goes on a scale from s to d s is any score 101 and above and d is barely passing we can create double s or s plus we can create F if something truly is worse than D. Let us know. But here we go. We have every type of donut, and I think Daisy is ready to lead you on your donut quest. Um, I think so, and I think we may have to crowdsource like two or three names of these donuts because there's a couple that I would just be like, "That's a donut." But I think nah, the I got you. but some of the some of them I'm like, okay, I think I think I know, but I could be wrong. So number one. I think it's just to clarify the the scale is like whether I like it or not as a donut. Okay, the metric, the the criteria for evaluation is completely up to your discretion. Yeah, it could be whether you like it as a donut, whether it's an iconic donut, how well it donut days. Yeah, is it is it better? Is it a good midnight donut? Is it the perfect birthday donut? Whatever you know, that kind of thing. And um, the scale, in addition to going vertically, it also goes horizontally. So like the top left is like number one bottom right okay. is like the worst and you can reorder them make this make this donut based tier list your own fantastic I'm all ready. right first up i think we got an eclair so i just give it a numerical rating right between one uh, zero and 100 oh right. no no <laughs> s yeah or, you, you could do that give it, that. Num- oh, give, it no, grade. give it the You're letter a letter rating. Grade. a letter grade yeah, yeah. Number grade, I can't that. S, A, B, C, D. I would give it a Clara B. Okay. okay. Solid middle. May, my favorite donut making an enemy of me already. <laughs> okay, this is one. What is it's It's cream filled? But is it yeah. Boston cream? Oh, wait. No, that's, uh, I would call that. This is one where I was like, is this Boston cream or is this no, Boston, a cream filled? Cream is later oh, it's later. Here. I see it. I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like a Boston cream yeah I see. This just looks like a cream filled, but not a Boston cream. And not a jelly donut. I'm not a jelly donut. Through. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, 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 get, I'd give that a B too. I maybe call that Bavarian cream, cream filled. Yeah. yeah oh, that yeah. might be. Yeah, that might be though. Mm-hmm. Would it be above or below? Like, is it better or worse than the Eclair? Uh, I think it's worse. Okay, cool. So I'll leave it behind there. Yeah, that's a good order. Yeah. This, I think, is just a classic. A glazed. Glazed, glazed donut. Yeah. Glazed rays. Glazed rays. I'd give that an A. Ooh. All right. Nice. I love, I love glazed donuts, too. I like the... You'll, I, well, I shouldn't influence you. I won't influence your choices. Nope. nope. We'll, 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 save it to, we'll save it to the end. Okay. This is a classic jelly filled. That's a jelly. Uh, I'd give a C to a jelly. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Okay. You see, the jelly is kind of gross. It's it's not like, like it's regular not like it's jelly. It's, it's yeah. It's not like it's good, you know, it's, tasty jelly. It just, it's, it's like chemical. The most yeah, exactly. If you can imagine the most like filtered, it's not jam. It's the most filtered no, weird jelly. It's jelly. Yeah, <laughs> like <freedom. laughs> it's juices. There's no oh my gosh. Oh no! As, as someone, as block someone who's done a, 
Uh, somebody's, oh, 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 oh. We shoot, just got, I got it. somebody trying to sell us viewers on a fake fan. Oh, anyway, thanks, Deathy. Thanks, Deathy. <laughs> uh, anyway, what were you saying, Dom? As someone who's from like a like a Catholic uh, Rust Belt area, like if it, if if it's not if it's not a if it's not a punch on Ash Wednesday, I don't want any jelly filled anything. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yeah. What about chocolate donuts, hostess? Oh, those, I in my family we call this the Sebastian Gorka because it looks like a tiny goatee. <laughs> Wait, so what is that? I can't even see that picture. It's so small. It's, I screen. know. They're all very it's the, small. It's Sorry about this. It's a chocolate donut that looks it's, like a that looks like a a little a little uh, like, a little goatee. <laughs> you get like eight of them in like a roll or something? Like, it's yeah, it's literally like the the roll, hostess yeah. bags you can get yeah, like yeah. at the gas okay. station. Yeah. But oh, those have the like donut. deep nostalgic value for me, so I'd probably have to give it a oh I I put it B, but after at the end of that hue right there, yeah, right got there. Got it. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, folks, we're we, we've got a normal distribution so far. Get ready. <laughs> yeah, get ready. So this I want to say is a fritter because the bear claw yeah. is over here. So I think yeah, this is fritter. actually a fritter. I give that an A. Well, future folklorists of America say you have never eaten a, a hostess, hostess donut. donut. Oh well, they didn't know me when I was like ten. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> True. All right. Yeah. Uh, fritter well, above or below? Didn't me until I was like thirty. <laughs> Whatever. <or> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's known himself longer than. Yeah. <laughs> what about? Uh, is this a good spot for the fritter behind? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's, okay. Let's, keep, let's keep it there. This. I might reverse, but we'll see. This is a chocolate icing with rainbow sprinkles. That was Baby Daisy's favorite. I would get chocolate with chocolate sprinkles. That's what I would get. Oh. Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate sprinkle. But this one's rainbow sprinkle. Let's put, let's put, put that an A for right now. I'm not sure where it's going to go. I have to okay. give this some thought. Okay. Okay. Right yeah. Now, this is like a donut twist, but I don't know if that, like, what the official name is. It looks like maybe a cinnamon twist donut. If, it, it dep if it's just glazed, I'd put it in S, but if it's cinnamon, I'd probably put it in A. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> Because they come in two different flavors. Mm, I, uh, yeah, what, totally. What's the I don't know. Between that and the one that's at the end of the tier list, Daisy, is that the cinnamon? The oh, to me, the one at the very end is a maple bar. Yeah, that's a maple no, bar. No, 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 not the very, very end. The one that's four from the end. Oh hmm. shit! What is that? Oh, that looks ahead, like no. Ahead. What's that? What's that? Um. There's a lot going it's on. A, it's picture. like a black and white donut. It reminds me. Oh, look up, okay. look up, like what a black and white twist donut is called. This might be so that one you just dropped there. Could you move it to the head of that line? Yeah. Oh, yeah. let's go. This look, this looks That's... pretty good. I think this oh, is like a cinnamon donut. Twist. This a is black and white thing twist. I've never okay, had, but it is real. That's okay. why I was. Yeah, I was like, it reminds never... me of that bread. That's well. Well, do you want to rank I've that one since we figured out where you want to put that one up here somewhere? So I'm guessing that's like chocolate and regular twisted. Yeah. Is Probably. That, I've yeah. Never, I've literally never had one of those. I, I guess either, I would have, but... I would have to put that in the A because that sounds kind of intriguing. Is this like a West Coast thing, Daisy? I've never seen. I was going to say, is it like a black and white cookie version of a donut? Like, that's what yeah, I made me think. Thing, that's right? a, that's something why something. I was like, is it a Baltimore thing? It's a burger thing, cookie. But... What is it? A burger yeah, cookie. Yeah, burger cookie. It's a, the burger cookie yeah. donut. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like a burger cookie donut. Okay, now this one is. I know what that is. Tell me, because it's a cronut. Oh, okay, it's a cronut. Okay, that's well, what that's it's a cronut. Those are pretty good. Those are like the layers. Right? Yeah, the layers. Yeah, this is super yeah. layery donut that maybe has cream filling, um, uh, but definitely lots and I, lots I've of. I've never had one with cream flake, filling, but yeah, I have, flaky I have layers. Those I that. That's gonna go in A. Okay. Um, any order? Maybe right. Maybe right before the uh, right. One more over to the to the right. Yeah, there. Put it there. Cool. All right. Bear claw, maple bear claw. Oh, yeah. Bear claw what goes up. Let's bear go. claw goes up on S. Yeah! yeah. Bear claw S. Very good. Is there any reason in particular? Do you just like a a big ass they're donut? Just huge. They're just huge. They're just huge. <laughs> Say yeah, they're just like a big ass donut, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> Especially like if, if they have a tasteful amount of cinnamon yeah. rolled in, that's good. If it's an over cinnamon, then you know, and usually there's like a good kind of crusty glaze going on there. Mm -hmm. It's yeasted, which is nice. Yeah, you know, that's why I more care yeasted donuts and cake donuts for the most part. But what about donut holes? Oh, th those go on the S too. Yeah, above yeah. and below bear claw. 
You can eat oh, like right a there. you can eat like right a there. bucket of those too. I know. I mean, it's yeah, like you like... anything. <laughs> All right, we got Boston cream. There we go. Oh God, I don't really like those. Put those in D. Oh. Goodbye, Boston cream. Donut. My other favorite <laughs> donut. There's, there's too much cream. going on with those. Uh, <laughs> That's fair. It's, it's an exquisite art. <laughs> it's like a pizza with too many ingredients, Dom. <laughs> You can't say that to him. He's Italian. Sometimes you're in Illinois. You can say that to an Italian. Oh, okay. You knew exactly where to hit me. <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes you're in Illinois. Uh, <laughs> now, this donut looks like an old-fashioned, like a glazed old-fashioned. I was going to say, is this a sour cream? Oh. <laughs> well, sour cream or old-fashioned that goes in S. Ooh. Okay. Good to know. Because I think this one and this one are two different versions of an old-fashioned. My... Well, yeah, that's what my like, dad oh, called oh, them, but... Yeah, I think There's that's a like a chocolate one. one. I think this is a chocolate old fashioned. I would call that a chocolate cake. Yeah, or a yeah. chocolate old fashioned. Yeah. And then this was just an old fashioned. So well, I, I think assume the internet's telling me people use old fashioned and sour cream donut kind of interchangeably. Oh, yeah, I, maybe I just don't know. I, I don't. I've okay. never heard of a sour cream donut. So I well, I've yeah, never heard of calls it sour cream. I think <laughs> maybe that's our West Coast, uh, Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, oh, the folklorists of America are asking that to be placed in an, a new S plus tier. We can. You know that's my favorite donut. What? So it's probably gonna move. It's gonna move over to the left, but it could be S plus too. Yeah. Uh, Let's move I it over think, to the left for now. Then. Yeah. yeah, I was like, can I create S plus while yeah, I'm doing yeah. this on the fly? Yeah, you hold can. On, hold yeah, on. you can. Hit the hit the hit the cog. I just add a row up top. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Add a row above. Add a row above. Yeah. S plus. What's your favorite color? Don't think about it too hard. Oh, uh, purple. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. That's indigo. Oh, that's the wrong. Hold on. Also, I was I didn't want to tell you. <laughs> hey, it's fine. Back to red. Back to red. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, this is very. Why did that happen? Okay. You hit the you hit the arrows. Oh god, it's me. It's me flipping around. Okay, it's just me being. Right, all right, good Daisy. There we go. It's all good. <laughs> Only complicated. I figure it. it's true. Yeah, it's really just me, honestly. Okay, that's purple yeah. enough. There we go. S plus 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 plus. Yeah, perfect. Right. Hell yeah. Okay. okay. You right, so you here? scored this like a one hundred and ten percent. Yeah, yeah. 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 Basically. Every time, every time I want that donut. All right. This uh I think is just a glazed it's like a glazed bar? Yeah, I think it's just a glazed bar. bar. Yeah. Not what do you cream call filled. It? This, not a long john? No, Do you I, call I've it never that? Heard that phrase, I've never no. heard that. You've not heard of Long John? No. I would, I would put that in A. Okay. okay. Any particular spot? Oh, you know, put, it, put it in S. Put it right after the uh, donut holes. Yeah. All right. All right. That's pretty good. Now, this is an interesting discrepancy because there's sort of two different versions of uh, powdered donuts and i think one you could maybe say you got these little dinky donuts from the fair that are then powdered dinky sugar donuts. there was a okay there was a place at our little, fair called dinky donuts and little it, dinky donuts sounds like a character <laughs> <you should> leave. <laughs> oh my god yeah i'm not i'm not that, that finished cartoon you were talking about yeah oh, i'm young moomin and yeah, dinky donut dinky donut. <laughs> dinky donut is the weasel who lives next door who brings them sweets oh my god yes <laughs> I, I think that's it um, okay um, well, so many cheap so we, viewers today. Oh my god! Anyway, like Stop. A, uh, I, I I can't I can't tell what's going on. It looks like a clove okay. of garlic on my screen. <laughs> I think this is a pile of like small homemade fair based powdered donuts, and right next to it is the powdered donut donut hostess version, like a bag of them that are mass produced hostess style. I my I know people who chow down on these host yeah, powdered like, those hostess those donuts oh my god you can eat like a million of those it's dangerous yeah so uh, i think i'll make the distinction a, as one bag side. next yeah. to the other chocolate donuts okay they're, they're, yeah, they're are you over behind yeah you more like, tr more that chocolate order is fine. Okay. okay i think that order i'm more so, chocolate okay and, what about and the that? other ones i guess put it on in the c category yeah Ooh. Ooh, okay okay above jelly or below jelly um, which is worse above okay above. jelly's still worse okay yeah. and anti-filled donut over here yeah i'm not a fan part. i'm messy too you got you got a you got a, you got, a, you, got a you got a glazed bar up top is that not filled not the glazed bar they're usually not filled they're, okay, okay, yeah they're usually good. not filled 
<laughs> DNA sources, this is unhinged. Well, just wait, there's more to review because there's there's some other ones. I think this is a chocolate old fashioned or a chocolate sour cream donut. Yeah, I, I would put that in A after the an glazed. A? Okay. After glaze. Just Hell like yeah. that. All right. Yeah. This, this is a crawler. Is a crawler? Yeah, it's a crawler. crawler. You know, I'm not a fan of those. I've tried oh. to like them. You're killing all How my favorite John. All my I would put them donuts. in B. I would put them in B. Okay. Top. I mean, I'll eat. No, I, I think right, right at the end there, after the white powdered chemical donuts. Wow. <laughs> I, I'm i surprised that you don't like them as much. They're just so light. They're just like, there's I guess that's fair. There. That's fair. You know? I was going to say, that to me, they seem very similar to like an old fashioned, but. Well, old fashioned has like a yeah. weight. To yeah, it's true. Like they're a, like they're like dense, the, cakey. It has yeah. a mouth feel that is appealing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, now this one. Don't know how much you've thought about this, but it's a mochi donut. Have you ever had one of those? No, but I want one. That sounds great. <laughs> they're very. They're. Pe- it, it's kind of. Um, you know, like how yeah. mochi is like really gl- glutinous, and so it's yeah, kind of chewy. Yeah. It's kind of chewy, mm-hmm. but not. It's it's like a. Is it deep fried like a donut? It is deep. Like it is deep donut? fried like a donut. I think there's some other. I think it's not just like rice gluten or tapioca or whatever. I think it's like mm-hmm. a. I think it's like mixed in another batter, but they're kind of oh. chewy, and they usually come in like this little ring. It's kind of hard to see, but they have like. Oh. It's and they have like a big they have like a big hole in the middle because they're using some kind of form for the pan. Yeah. Or whatever. Okay, tear apart, you're just like pulling the little bit. You off. could you could tear it apart, you could just eat it. I don't know. Okay. I see I think it's either way, consumable in either way. Well th- this is very intriguing to me <laughs> and I never had one, but I would definitely put it in the A category, maybe before the chocolate old fashioned. Ooh, okay. You have to try one, I'm sure that they're totally it's going to be a spot okay, in and I'm around gonna, your I'm area. Gonna, I'm going to find one. Yeah. Is this, this some, a, like a Japanese thing or a Japanese American thing? It's, what? It's, a, it's at least a Japanese thing, but it's interesting because I see them sometimes paired oh. paired with mochi, or I mean with mochi, with boba shops. Oh, I'm on the Wikipedia page. You know where yeah. they're from? Oh, where? Korea? Hawaii. Oh, that that's cool. Sense. That does make a lot that of sense, actually. Sense. Now. That makes a lot of sense. I guess there. I should have got some. Dang. Damn. Oh, damn. Yeah, they're it's probably there. Dang. <laughs> cool. Okay, so I'm the only one who does, who's never heard of them called Long John's. The chat c- consents. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I've not heard of that. <laughs> I have not, so I'm the... Okay, you and I... You and I... Yeah, we're, we're, in, we're in it, Daisy. All right. We got all right, two left. Donut? It sure is. It's that Simpsons classic. Oh, God. Those remind me of Sunday mornings. Um, yeah, that, that's got to go in the C category. Oh, bad Sunday mornings. Just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> those, uh, those, like those remind me of childhood trauma. <laughs> Any order in particular? Like, no, I fine right where it was. Fine. I think right. it, 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 it's right there. All right. Okay, maple bar. This maple is a bar. tough one. I know. I I know where I want this to go, John. I mean, these <laughs> these can be like overwhelming if it if the maple is put on too thick and you're like you're done yeah. for the day. Yeah. But it can also be rewarding. They're good donuts to share. I'll say okay, that. that's fair. Very fair. Um, hmm. Let's see. What do I have after the the chocolate old fashioned? What's I can't. Is that that's little... the that's like the fritter, apple fritter. Oh yeah. yeah. That's, you know, I think... Okay, the fritter goes above the chocolate old fashioned. It, it okay. needs to go once, not over. Okay. I love this Got part you. Of the Got you. Yeah, that's that. like a that's a um. After the chocolate old fashioned, now is the um, cronet. That's the cronet, yeah. I think the maple bar for me goes above a cronet, Ooh. but in that, so in the A realm. That's tough. Right there. But yeah, but I might need to move some things around here. All right, though, let's so do it. Let's go for it. Do you want to run through okay, them? So after, we can run through them. Yeah, S S the uh, the top four are fine. Okay, nice. nice. I don't need to move that at all. Great. Um, okay, a then category. we got the twist, right? The yeah, twist. the twist, like a cinnamon twist. twist. Yeah. Twist yeah. glaze mochi is the next one. I think that's staying with those, those, well, I'm so intrigued by these mochi ones. Jeez, but you I, I got to try because one. I've never, because I've never had one, I'm going to keep it where it is. Okay. Cool. Okay, then we go. That's fritter. good. Fritter. The fritter. The, the maple. Okay. 
What's that one? That's the. This is like a chocolate chocolate, chocolate rainbow sprinkles. Yeah. Cho- oh, yeah, but see, I'm never a huge fan of sprinkles. They're just kind of waxy, and yeah, but I like the chocolate raised donut. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then what's after that one? That's the um... that's like the burger cookie twist. I don't, it's not a burger. Oh cookie, but yeah, it's what, which the, I've never the had, but I'm intrigued by that too. It's probably chocolate vanilla. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then we go to the the next on on the B level. That's the just cream... like an e- eclair. Yeah, eclair, and then yeah. the cream filled. I mean, the, regular... the, if the eclair isn't super sweet cream. I would probably bump it up one, but sometimes they can be really sort of saccharine, like just mm. o- overly mm-hmm. sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I will say, uh, Future Folklore of America says, I don't like mochi, du- mochi nuts, Dad. Oh, really? So apparently what? there's what? some... I will say they are they are kind of like, you have to understand that it's mochi, so they're a little bit Chewy, yeah, you know, in a in a way that's that weird. That's what I kind of like about okay. mochi. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you like that about mochi, you might be into it. Where have you had them? Uh, I I yeah, tap, I don't know. I <laughs> Where have you had them? <laughs> yeah. Uh, please respond. Where have you had them? Like, I, I <laughs> have not had them. Had them. Right? I've <laughs> had them. I've had them in Columbus. They have like a. They have at Where? least two. Well, they popped up within like the last like three Buckeye? years. No, not at Buckeye. Oh. No, they are, they're always at like combination boba places or com- oh. or like combo like korean food places which is kind of interesting mm, okay so okay. like you can but get I, I do trust future folklorists of america so i'm wondering if maybe i should yeah. move it down but it doesn't mean i wouldn't like it it just seems maybe i should move it down well let's let's Either go way. down to um let, let's go down to the the b level then and see okay so that's i think that's in a pretty good order okay you want me to move okay. this one down no 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 okay. let's, let's just keep leave it yeah right yeah now. so we got we got the two different donuts. Oh no, they're from New Orleans. Oh no, Lauren likes them. God, uh, we have to make a different category that's like F minus. <laughs> we can do that. Just, just we can do F minus. We can, we can make F minus. We can make, from America, we can make I'm booting the, the mochi nuts. <laughs> uh, you definitely find, like find, find them in Annandale. You find them in Annandale. Apparently, you'd find them in Annandale. I bet I bet the H Mart in Atlanta might have them. Yeah, yeah. They probably I'll would. pop up to H Mart. Yeah, <laughs> they they got a little food court in the H Mart. You can probably find it like the pastry store in the food court of the H Mart. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go do that. Okay, you know I think I'm happy with my distribution right I now. I think it's good. I think it's good. John, we have a sort of. John, I have yeah. a question for you. Is there yeah. is there because there's there's a big one for me missing. Is there any of your favorite yeah. donuts missing? That are missing. Yeah, like a go-to donut that you wish one of my was on this donuts list is not on here. No, these are all the ones yeah. that I mean. I usually go for the old-fashioned. Uh, yeah, I don't think any of mine would be on here because uh, the only thing I could think of would just be further extreme toppings which seems to be the largest variation of donut i'm not really talking extreme toppings two two of those aren't even donuts the the one the one kind of donut that's missing for me is like the entomans yeah like they're like partly partly yeasted they just i don't understand how they make them like that i love Um, those like the yellow the chocolate donuts with the yellow inside yeah, they're kind of yellowy. Yeah. They're weird, and, and and like they're appealing at times, but sometimes you're just like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what I'm eating. Ooh, yeah, so Chad, that is, Chad is asking for the buttermilk bar. Buttermilk bar. Oh, uh, buttermilk bars. Oh, those are yeah, those are missing. Yeah. Okay. 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 Hey, man. Where would you? Okay. So you know, what's, you know what's missing on mine? What? Uh, one like the blueberry sour cream. Okay. And and two, the other one that I love. Like the the cake donut with the peanuts on top instead of instead of sprinkles. I've, oh yeah, I've seen those. Okay, those those are I'm a freak, those are, but those are two of my favorites with Boston cream pie. <laughs> yeah, but buttermilk bar I put up up top too. I think I just had the Boston cream pie Ben and Jerry's over the weekend. It was so good. I don't know the Boston cream pie is something. I just I don't. I'm like sorry, it. it's my favorite. <laughs> we can still be friends. Okay. <laughs> for now <laughs> um i'm gonna add buttermilk bar to this tier list and john you're not gonna be able to see this from where you are 
but um, you'll be able to see it in the interview. Okay, again. blueberry donut is goaded. Thank you. I love a blueberry donut. It's my favorite of the sour cream donuts. <laughs> favorite in the sour cream family. Uh, also, also okay. shout out to Daisy. Bu- Buckeye Donuts, the Buckeye Donut, like the chocolate donut oh, with yeah. peanut butter oh, my in the God. middle. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Any, I mean, the Buckeye anything is good. Like it's just chocolate peanut butter is good. Yeah, <laughs> like it's, it's just it's, it's not it's not possible to be. Yeah, yeah I, they don't tell you about Ohio. They figured out the peanut butter cup, and it's the peanut butter seed. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's the peanut butter seed for real though. <laughs> it's like the proportion of like chocolate to That's peanut right. butter is like a whole. It's a whole art to it. There you go. Well, hell yeah. I guess on a scale from, uh, what would that be? The buttermilk bar or or sort of just a, a glazed old fashioned all the way down to the Boston cream. How filled is your donut? That's this sort of the wrap up for this. Anti-filling house. <laughs> I, I do not like filled donuts, so zero <laughs> percent is <laughs> ideal. <laughs> Thank you, my heart. Oh my gosh. Uh, John, I'm going to put you back on screen at large. And thank you so much for spending oh, this is a blast. Thank the, you guys for having the me. evening with us. Um, yeah, I feel like we learned a lot. Thanks for, you know, still wanting to hang out with us post Magfest silliness. <laughs> and uh, I, are you are guys going this year? Uh, Dom is probably going. I don't know if I don't know if I'm going. I have to write a dissertation. Yeah, we gotta finish the dissertation. I have to finish my dissertation. I don't know if I can go this year, but um, we have to be advisors. I say don't go. Yeah, yeah, that's probably wise. (laughs) That's probably wise. Um, the theme this year is Sonic. Yeah, which is also a whole other. Shoot, maybe we should do like Sonic and why it's folklore to lead up to Magfest. Anyway, that um, would be fun. (laughs) Uh. Yeah, John, thanks for hanging out with us for real. Thanks for playing this game with us. Um, and I, yeah, I, I look forward to seeing you at AFS, the American Folklore Society Conference. Yes. Hell yeah. We'll be there. Yeah. Ladders and chat for John. Ladders people. and chat. You all know what to do. And if you don't have ladders, a hearty GG's for good game. Um, that's, you know, Twitch speak, Twitch folklore for uh, thanks. On many On many Making quilts helps me to get a sense of my own space, to find my way 